Hi guys and welcome back. After the engine was assembled with the new crankcases, I hit the dyno and almost immediately I got a water leakage. So uh, I just went back again and found out that uh, the squish, squish wasn't uh, enough. And uh, as you can see, you have a, a line here which comes from the cylinder head. So it has been in contact here, but no further damage and, and uh, we found out real soon. So uh, I just corrected the squish through a proper clay test, which sh should have been done. Uh, and the, the squish is supposed to be somewhere around uh, 1.0 to 1.2 millimeters for this type of uh, engine configuration. At the second dyno test, uh, we did uh, more testing and it was uh, successful until uh, the vibrations uh, suddenly started to increase. So we called it off and uh, back home in the workshop I could see that um, this gear that's situated on, on the crankshaft itself had turned a little bit, knocked off the woodruff key and uh, just turned a couple of degrees. This is the edge of the counterbalancer where you can see that it actually has been in contact with the Conrod's big, big end. So I guess uh, you can't get any closer than this without having a disaster. Another thing that also needed attention was this Kush drive and uh, the al old aluminum plate here was getting worn. So I replaced it with a laser cut stainless sheet metal instead. Um, so that uh, keeps the sprocket in place nice and tidy. With all rotating bits and bobs in place, the third dyno run was a success as you can see on the happy faces. After having done three uh, tests at the dyno and fixed the um, miscellaneous problems in between every one of them, the last one was successful though, uh, I did a, a track day test and that worked uh, very well as well. Uh, so uh, I thought uh, why not head off for a race for the first time and then try it out uh, for real. But uh, the last uh, test start before packing up showed that there was water in the oil. Not very good at all. So that was a big disappointment. But uh, let's uh, have a look on the oil and uh, see if you can figure out if there's water in it you too. Just by looking at it, it uh, doesn't seem uh, all that bad. But um, you can always try uh, to heat it up and see if there is uh, some water in it. So here's uh, the small sample with uh, oil in a teaspoon and um, if there's water in it, it would be boiling off at a much lower temperature uh, than, uh, than the oil. So if I start heating here a little bit, you know the drill from somewhere else perhaps. I don't know if you can see that the bubbles are coming. And that is water boiling off from the oil. Now it's maybe hot enough. And uh, what's left in the spoon is oil, of course, without the water content. So this is like uh, one of um, one of different ways of, of determining if you have uh, water in your oil, if it's not that obvious from it being grey or white even. One way of finding where the water is entering uh, the engine is to uh, circulate uh, coolant through it and uh, uh, choke it up on the outlet so I get some pressure inside and uh, by that trying to determine where the leakage is. So this uh, method I'd used before just with a normal drill pump circulating it into the uh, engine. I made an adapter for that reason this time so I can uh, so I don't have to have the 
uh, transmission cover on because uh, that is one way of eliminating one one uh, error source so uh, by this and adding uh, pyronin you know the thing that uh, works well with the uv lamp so i can see where uh, the leakages are and also uh, measuring heating it up here on a on a stove uh, so uh, this is um, me trying to find where the leakage is so now i've uh, run it with uh, hot pressurized water for about half an hour and uh, it's uh, i cannot find any leakages uh, within the engine block um, and i've uh, tried to find it with this uh, uv lamp you know it's it's uh, really easy to find uh, if there is a drop somewhere and uh, I tried to locate uh, if something was coming out of um, the crankcase uh, past the piston or uh, from the engine head gasket there was nothing and uh, there was nothing coming down from uh, the cam chain tunnel and there is nothing uh, here as either so um, I guess this tells me that uh, the, the leakage is, is not on this side, it's, uh, it's this bastard. The water pump shaft showed some signs of wear, so I had to polish it and uh, replace the seal that also had seen better days. And while, it, while at it and, and uh, splitting the whole engine, I also saw that there were some chew marks on the o-rings around the cylinder liner so i replaced all of them as well just to be sure a couple of years ago my lousy mechanic i don't know he um forgot uh, some crucial part in the oil system so i ran out of oil and everything seized and galled in the whole engine so in order to save the last remains of the season i had um, um, new camshafts uh, couldn't make it in time to make new ones but i had them welded on and, and grinded again but as it turned out this uh, added material didn't work very well with uh, the tappets so they immediately uh, gold uh, so so that was um, not very good so I had uh, new tappets, um, I got new tappets and I had them coated with uh, DLC, diamond-like coating. And uh, it, it is very, very hard and um, hard surface. And it's also just as expensive as it sounds. Um, so uh, that worked pretty well uh, together with uh, some, some oil with uh, higher zinc content in this case paybacks work very well um, i've got about uh, 30 40 hours of operation out of these and um, but i could uh, see that even the, with this um, very hard surface it uh, the camshafts wore them down so i could see actually that the steel material shining through so it was just a matter of time before this would uh, seize again. And it did, of course, this uh, in, the, in the beginning of this season, very timely. Uh, so uh, one of the exhaust lobes were, were down. And uh, I thought to myself that uh, there's no use in, in uh, welding and grinding. I'd better just make new ones again. So... Um, but these ones uh, are uh, custom made from scratch so you know it's not like you can go to um, the grocery store and buy new ones uh, you get a piece of metal that you can harden Out of these, I had um, 
the new gear camshafts made. And uh, fortunately enough, I made um, an additional four of these uh, tappets, so I, I got those. So now I'm putting uh, a cylinder head back together again. Uh, I also had some problem with um, a water leakage from uh, this transmission cover or the cover of the water impeller. Uh, I had this uh, machine just uh, to shave off a couple of tents to, to make this surface nice and uh, to, um, to uh, avoid the problems you have with, with the OAM um, impeller covers because they they are weak and they get warped. So so uh, I had um, I cut it up and um, had, <coughs> had my machinist friend uh, make new ones, and this this time with uh, an O-ring that seals, so you can take them on and off, and, and uh, you never have to replace a gasket uh, in that way. So uh, that's a good improvement. Uh, so um, now I'm uh, putting all this back and uh, on uh, Tuesday is uh, track day, so uh, keep your fingers crossed please. <laughs>